Right, so this video is looking still at investment income. We've dealt with interest as well as local dividends. This one is going to focus on the exemptions available for foreign dividends. So the first thing to understand, because our principle is that before you can have an exemption, there needs to be a gross income gross income inclusion, is that foreign dividends are dividends that are paid by a non-resident company, which means they're not from a South African source. So non-residents will never look at section 10 capital B, the section number you also have to know, in terms of exemptions, because this one is only available to a resident because it's only residents that are taxed on worldwide income and that will have to specifically include foreign dividends in their gross income by virtue of paragraph K. Now, how Section 10B, capital B, works is it, it's got two parts. It's got what is known as the full or total exemption, Section 10B2, and then it has what is known as the ratio exemption or the partial exemption. Now, we will always test first whether or not a foreign dividend qualifies for a full or total exemption, and only if it doesn't qualify for a full or total exemption will we go down and consider the ratio exemption. Now, there are four types of full exemptions for EBAL 2708. You only have to know two of those. So a foreign dividend in the following instances will be completely exempt, i.e. in total. Firstly, if we look at and we call this the participation exemption, if the person holds at least 10% of the equity shares and voting rights in the foreign company. So this looks at your percentage shareholding. So if you own you know, more than 10% or 10% or more, well, that's actually what it says, of the equity shares in a foreign company, then your foreign dividend will be exempt. Please note that it has to be shareholding in terms of equity shares. If it is paid in respect of a share other than an equity share, for example, a preference share like there, that over there, then you cannot qualify for the full exemption. Then you can consider the ratio exemption, the one we're going to look at a bit later. Then what you also need to know is if the foreign dividend is paid in relation, relation to JSE listed shares, now, um, foreign companies can also list their shares on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and those foreign dividends will then be exempt if, firstly, the foreign dividend is a cash dividend, in other words, it's not a dividend in spe specie, or alternatively, it can also be exempt, but this one's only available for um, resident companies. If the foreign dividend is received by South African resident company and it consists of a distribution in specie. In other words, it's a, it's a dividend in a form other than cash. Now, I forgot to mention at the beginning, Section 10 capital B is available for both natural and non-natural persons. So companies can also qual qualify for this. And for JSE listed shares, the moment that the, the foreign dividend is a dividend in specie, in other words, they give, exam, for example, a car or a machine or a building as a dividend instead of cash. If a South African resident company receives it, then they can qualify for a full exemption. Very important. And those two little crosses basically refer to the same thing. There's no full exemption for a foreign dividend if it's paid in the form of an annuity or if it's paid out of foreign dividends. In other words, but this one, you shouldn't worry too much about that usually relates to trusts, etc. So for us, make sure that you know that if the foreign dividend is paid in the form of an annuity, then it loses its entire exemption. Right, so that's the full total exemptions. Now, if something is not full, fully exempt, for example, you own shares in a foreign company, but you don't own more than 10%, or it's not shares that are listed on the JSE, what we have then is what is known as Section 10B3, the ratio or partial exemption. And what this exemption does is it gives a partial exemption for foreign dividends that are not otherwise exempt. And here you're going to have to do a calculation, a ratio. And this is going to depend on the type of taxpayer you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with a natural person, the ratio that you'll use to determine 
the exam portion is 25 over 45 and if it's a company you're going to use 8 over 28. What's not on the mind map but that you should please add because you'll pick it up in the textbook is that if foreign dividends are paid in the form of an annuity they also use this or lose this ratio exemption. So we looked when we looked at non-residents and interest, they lose the section 101H exemption if they receive it in the form of an annuity. Um, you will lose the section 101K for local dividends exemption if it's paid in the form of an annuity. And the moment that foreign dividends are paid in the form of an annuity, they will also not be exempt. They will neither be exempt in terms of section 10B2, which is the full exemptions, nor will they be exempt in terms of section 10B3, the ratio exemptions. Right, or the partial exemption. Let's have a look at a case study. So if you go to case study five in your study guide, we have Mr. Z, who is a South African resident. He's 64 years old. He owns shares in the following foreign companies. ABC, a company that's effectively managed in the UK. He owns 12% of the equity shares in the company. And ladies and gentlemen, that immediately triggers me to think okay he's gonna because he's a south african resident he's gonna have um he's gonna be taxed on worldwide income so any foreign dividends that he received receives will be included in gross income by virtue of paragraph k and then because he owns at least 10 percent of the equity shares in this foreign company any foreign dividends he receives from abc could be or could qualify for a full exemption then second company df um, he owns 5% of the equity shares in the company, and then he owns 2% of the equity shares in GHD, and this company's shares is listed on the JSE. Now, again, this one tells me, oops, I could have a full exemption in terms of Section 10B. And then they tell you that for the current year of assessment, 2019 year of assessment, he received 45,000 Rand foreign dividends from ABC, 60,000 from DEF, and 50,000 from DHD, and the question is, how are we going to account for this in his taxable income calculation? Right, so just a reminder, and I didn't say it on the other videos, but I'm hoping that you remember, have a look at the layout of the answer. So we have Mr. Z, he's a gross, he's a resident, so will be taxed on worldwide income. I actually write it in there because it's going to force me to think about this in the right way. Now, the foreign dividend from ABC PLC, because he's a South African resident, it's going to be included in terms of paragraph paragraph K of the gross income definition. So we include 45,000 Rand into gross income. Then, because he owns at least 10% of the equity shares, we will exempt the full 45,000 Rand, and that exemption, of course, is indicated with a bracket. The dividend from GHD, right, also gross income in terms of paragraph K, because it relates to JSE listed shares, irrespective of the number of shares or the shareholding percentage, the full 50,000 Rand will be exempt. Our problem, not problem, but our issue lies with DEF, because it's neither listed on the JSE nor does his shareholding exceed 10%, which means we're going to have the gross income inclusion of 60,000 Rand. But now we have to think about what does he qualify for. If he doesn't qualify for a full exemption in terms of Section 10, capital B, he could qualify for Section 10B3, the ratio or partial exemption. And because he is a natural person, we will calculate the exemption as follows. We will take the amount of the foreign dividend and we will multiply that with 25 over 45 because that is the ratio that the Act tells us we have to use if it is a natural person or um, a trust, but we don't do trusts in email 2708. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just for interest's sake, I want to show you how you can test um, whether you've calculated your ratio exemption correctly. Um, and it, it, it boils down to what the 25 and 45 represent. So if you look at the 45, it has reference for us or it has meaning for us in tax because 45% is the maximum rate that a natural person can be taxed at in South Africa, right? Now, if I take 45, and I deduct from that 25, what I'm going to get 
is 20, right? And that 20 also represents something for us specifically in terms of tax because it represents the dividends tax rate in South Africa. So what they essentially try to do with the ratio exemption is to make sure that they treat local dividends and foreign dividends more or less the same. So either they are fully exempt, right? Um, but if they don't qualify in terms of foreign dividends for the full exemptions, then we will only tax a portion of it. And it goes back to the 20% dividends tax rate. So you can test this calculation by saying, right, if I want to know what of the 60,000 rand is taxable, I'm going to take 60,000 and I'm going to multiply it by the dividends tax rate over 45, and that's going to give me 26,667. And that's the taxable portion. That's the income. What is exempt? 25 over 45. Something to think about is how your answer in case 35 would change if the shareholder was a company and not a natural person. And here's a hint. In terms of the full exemptions, it's not going to make a change, but there is going to be a change if we do the ratio or the partial exemption, because you can't use 25 over 45, because that's only available for natural persons. So what ratio will you use if you are dealing with a company and not a natural person? Right, so that ends foreign dividends and the exemptions relating to foreign dividends. Up next is the final video that's going to look at purchased annuities as well as alimony.